This is Math 142. We are going to look at section 8.6, which is about parametric uh, equations. And parametric equations uh, have a parameter. In other words, they have, uh, we're used to things in terms of like x, y. This would have us a third parameter, maybe t for time, that, that drive the other two equations. And there's several ways to write these, uh, but one notation will think of x as a function of t. So x, as t goes through some values, x reacts to that. And we could also say that y is um, a function of t as well. And it's this, 2 plus t. So notice what's going on here. t is the thing that's driving the game. x and y uh, react to it, right? They become things because of it. Now thinking about how this works, um, I could do like a table that would help me think about it. So notice I have three variables, t, x, and y. And then I'd run these through some values, like let's go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, just to get a sense of what's going on. So t is going to run through those values. And we know that it could also be like negative 2.5, negative 2.7, you know, all the, all the values between those. But then what we'll do is we'll plug them in and get x and y values. So if I plug in negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9, plus 1 is 10. So when t is negative 3, x is 10. And if I plug it into here, 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. y is negative 1. And you just keep doing that, right? Plug in negative 2 for t, 5 and 0. And again, just keep going. And there we go. We have, we have that. Now, if I wanted to graph this, sketch a graph of it, I have some points I can put on here. So notice I'm just going to graph x and y, and I'll talk about the role that t has here in a moment. I'm going to pull up some graph paper. There we go. And x has got to get out to 10. So maybe I'll, I'll do this just to help it be, you know, legible. And then y goes from negative 1 to 5. I'll do something like this then. And let me graph these points. So uh, 10, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'll mark 5 so I can see it. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10, negative 1 would be here. 5, 0 would be here. 2, 1, 1, 2. 2, 3, 5, 4, oh, look at that, and 10, 5, something like that. And so notice now, I just let t run from negative 3 to 3. I'm going to assume, it, assume it's smooth in between these. If I, if I wasn't convinced of that, I could, you know, plug in some values between them. But as I connect them, it goes like this. And what I want you to notice, it should go through the points, of course. What I want you to notice is t, as t increases, we go in this order. So order is important. So what t gives us here is some direction. Right? We can put some arrows on here showing that as t changes, these points change. So it has this dynamic movement to it. So it has an orientation to it, we could say. So thinking about this, there's a couple of tools you could use. You know, you can, you can make this table by hand and graph it. If you have a graphing calculator, um, we want to look at it in a parametric mode. So I'm going to look at my mode. And right now it's set in function mode. I'm going to change that to par for parametric. Notice there's a polar mode too. So parametric mode, hit enter. And now that it's in that mode, if I go back to y equals, notice I have an input for x in terms of t and an input for y in terms of t. So I'm going to put those in here. And this button um, changes, uh, has a different input depending on what your mode is. If we're in parametric mode, this will be a t. So if I want to say t squared, I can use that button. So x is t squared plus 1, y is 2 plus t. And now notice I can look at um, the table. So if I just look at the table for it, there's that table we just made. And you can also do this type of graphing in Desmos. So if you do it in Desmos, here that is. And in Desmos, when you, when you want to graph it, you know, when we think of points, we, we say like x, y, right? So instead of saying x equals y equals, you put the x part uh, in the x part of the point. So think of it as a point t squared plus 1, comma, and then 2 plus t. 
So hopefully you can see x equals that, y equals that. And notice this is running from 0 to 1, so then you can change this, say, eh, I want it to go from negative 3 to 3. And then there's that right now. And if you wanted to go a little farther, you know, you could go farther and see and see more of the, more of the graph. So that's the idea behind parametric equations. If we were doing, um, you know, another one, we could just plug in the values again and go from there. So here is that, um, here's that equation again, that parametric equation. And what I want to do is um, show how to eliminate the parameter. In other words, how would I write this just in terms of x and y? And the thing, to, there's a couple techniques, but, but one of them is to do substitution. So this has a t squared in it. I'm going to solve this for t and plug it into the other one. And I'm going to think of these, I'm going to, I'm going to stop writing this as x as a function of t. I'm just going to say x equals that. It's just a different notation. And y equals that. So let's see, solve for t here. So subtract 2 from both sides. So t is y minus 2, they're equivalent to each other. So how about I plug that into that spot? In other words, I'm going to substitute this into there for that t. So I could say x equals uh, y minus 2 squared plus 1, because that was just t. And then now, let's see, multiply this out. y squared minus 4y plus 4 plus 1. Combine up some like terms. And there we go, that parameter has been eliminated. Now, um, it's real straight, you know, straightforward if you just have a T all alone and you can just solve for it. There's a couple little um, pieces of technique to think about. Again, I'm not going to write this X in terms of T. I'm just going to say X. So X equals E, right, the number E to the power of negative T. And Y equals 3 times E to the power of T. So let's think about this. You know, I could solve for t, but that seems like a bit of work. Maybe I'll solve for e of t, like, and then I could substitute it into this spot. In other words, if I know what e to the t equals from this equation, then what I could do is I could plug it in. So e to the negative t, well, what a negative power does is it flips the fraction. So that means e to the t would be that fraction flipped, 1 over x. Okay, well, good. Well, I know what e to the t is. It's 1 over x. So this can substitute it in for e to the t. These are equal to each other. So I could say y is equal to 3 times 1 over x, and 3 times 1 over x is 3 over x. And the parameter has been eliminated. Another example... All right, uh, y equals log of t, x equals square root of t plus 1. So I could solve this for t uh, by writing it, you know, 10 to the power of y, or I could solve this for t. I think I'll do this route. It doesn't, either one's okay, whatever one you choose. So subtract 2 from both sides. So x minus 2 equals the square root of t. And then how about we square both sides to get rid of that? And now that I know what t is, I can substitute that in for t. So that means that y would equal uh, the log of x minus 2, that quantity squared. And it, the parameter has been eliminated. There's one other technique I want to show you. It is, um, it's actually really beautiful. I think it has a nice, nice connections. Um, let's say that I said x of something was 5 times cosine of t, and y of t is 3 times sine of t. Who we? And again, I don't need that. I can just say x is equal to that and y is equal to that. I mean a very similar thing. So if I try to solve this for t, I'm going to end up with like an inverse cosine of something and an inverse sine of something. I can avoid it because... I have cosine and sine. One relationship that I know about cosine and sine, one of the many, is that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So if I can write this in terms of cosine squared, it can take the place of that. Or just in terms of cosine, it can be that squared. And if I can write this in terms of sine, take the place of that. So as I look at this one, 
Well, how about I just divide both sides by 5? So cosine is x over 5. And if I look at this one, same idea, right? I want to get sine all alone. Divide by 3. So y divided by 3 is sine. And here's how that helps me. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. I can just plug these in here. Cos if cosine is x over 5, cosine squared would be uh, x over 5 squared. Plus, here's what sine is. So y over 3 squared equals 1. I can go a little step further than this to square all those. x squared over uh, 25 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. And I'm there, and you can see that this is, uh, this is an ellipse. There's one other thing I want to talk about with, with this section, and that's um, writing, uh, writing something in parametric form given some information. So, so I've got a straight line that's going from this point to this point, and it does it in four seconds. So I have an x and a y that's changing as t, as t changes. So t is going to be my time. So let me just think about x for now. So x is going from negative 5 to 3 as t goes from 0 to 4. So basically, I have a linear relationship here, right? x is just changing at this constant rate, straight line, from negative 5 to 3 as t goes from 0 to 4. So if I think about this, my slope is going to be the change in x divided by the change in time. So let's see, the change in x, uh, negative 5 to 3, that's an increase of 8. And the change in time, 0 to 4, is a change of 4. So my slope here is 2. So I know that this is changing at a rate of 2 times t. Every time t goes up by 1, x goes up by 2. Now, the question is, though, if I just said this, when t is 0, this is a 0. So I'm off, right? Well, when t is 0, this is negative 5. So how about I subtract 5 from that? And now that'll, that'll work. And now I'm going to do similar thinking for the y value. And I'm just going to do this in a different color just because this is getting crowded. Uh, y is going from negative 3 to negative 1 in 4 seconds again as t goes from 0 to 4. So my slope for y is going to be the change in y divided by the change in time. We know the change in time is 4. And the change in y, 3 up to negative 1, is also 4. So that slope is 1. So I can say y equals t. And, uh, but if I just said y equals t, when t is 0, this would be a 0. So I'm off by 3, so I'm going to shift this up by 3. And there is my equation, um, my parametric equation for that. All right, uh, dig on into these. Send me messages with questions. Post questions in the forums. And uh, do your practice problems.